hopefully I'm not muted, uh, and hopefully people can now see me. Welcome. Uh, we are going to have an absolutely wonderful hour. I hope you're really excited uh, because we have obviously got a very special guest joining us. Uh, one thing I want to say straight away from the off is if you think of any questions during this, then write them in the Q&A section. Don't hold on to your questions until the end. Just as you think of them, stick them in there. I'll keep an eye on them as we go. Uh, and then we can then we can go through them and, and answer all of the questions you can think of. I will remind you as we go through this, just in case you forget. Now, let's get to it. So the person we want to hear from is the author of these books. It's his sixth book. You know him because he's been on The X Factor and Radio 2. And if you're as old as me, T4, please welcome Dermot O'Leary. <laughs> Dermot, how are you? Hi, how's it going? Yeah, really good. How are you? Yeah, hang on. Yeah. Start my video. Start my video, host. Yeah. Yay! There you, there you go. There we go. That's the video has been started. Uh, hey, Sam, how are you? I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Not bad at all. If you're as old as me, T4, Excellent. I don't think many yeah. people will 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 be that old. But <laughs> I I once went to T4 on the beach. Had a lovely time. That's, brings back memories. <laughs> uh, let's start in what I think will be perhaps a surprise to some people. Toto is a real Toto. cat. I've been trying to find it before we started. You know, I went upstairs yeah. and just been asleep on uh, on a bed upstairs pretty much all day. And uh, so when I, when I thought I'd go and get her, I thought, I know exactly where she'll be. And then she's, mm -hmm. in a very ninja-like way, it's just disappeared into thin air. Yeah. So I'd scoured the whole of the top of the house. No sign at all. Mm -hmm. You know, we call her Stealth Cat as well, because you will be, I know, I'll be cooking later on, and I'll turn around and she'll just be there. She won't make any noise <laughs> while getting there. And she'll just be there looking at me, asking for food. Um, yep. It is indeed. Toto is, a, is very much a real cat. Let me see if I can find a picture for you because um, her not being here makes me feel terrible. She is eight years old and about eight, nine years ago, eight and a half years ago, we were in Italy. We've got a little house in Italy, which we bought 15 years ago. We love, we're big fans of Italy. And we um, and where we are in Italy is a place called Puglia. So it's right in the heel of Italy. And it's, um, it's here she is. And it's... Uh, it's kind of it's very rural and so there's a lot of wild animals but they're not like they're not they're not pets but they're not feral so you can stroke a lot of them they're very a lot of the farmers use them down there in the olive groves to just like mm -hmm. warn off the rats and so forth so they're kind of they're fed i so for example last time i was there sam this is a true story i was yep. driving through the countryside and i stopped i had to take a picture of it and i saw a cat eating a bowl of pasta and this farmer was just, just made this what looked like really tasty pasta. And the cat was just sort of like, just, you know, lapping it up and like a carbonara or something. He looked up at me and gave me this look as if to go, what? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> this happens. This happens every day to me. Um, so, yeah. Oh, here she is. Yeah, so that's how Toto looks in real life. I don't know if you oh, amazing. There she is. Yeah. Oh, oh she's eyes. got great eyes. But sadly, yeah. they don't work. So she she has about five percent vision. We realised this. Um, okay, to go back to the story, eight years ago we were in Italy and um, and one of these cats started hanging around our house. And um, her name was Plaxi. We called her Plaxi after one of our sort of friends that rented the place office or borrowed the place office. And she uh, and she was really heavily pregnant. And I had to come back a day early. So my wife was out there and and my wife helped deliver these kittens uh, that night. Plexi had her babies. So we were we were gonna get a dog that year. We ended up taking two cats back and the neighbor kept two. <laughs> and then when we got to when we got Toto and Silver, her brother, back here, we realized that she kept bumping into things. And my wife was saying, I think she's blind. And obviously in that kind of proud cat dad, I was like, no, 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 she's fine, don't worry, she'll be fine. And then we <laughs> took it for the vet, and lo and behold, she she's has pretty much five percent vision. But what she does see are um, breaks in light. So if a bird flies over or if uh, if a sun hits the room and, and you know and, and you're playing with the toy, she you know she, she's got these great reactions. And so we started calling her little ninja as a, as a as a kind of nickname, and it stuck. And then when I had a bit more time a couple of years ago, about five years, six years ago now, I um, I thought this is a hang on, this could be a really good idea for a book. And so I, um, I, I, you know, I put pen to paper and I pitched this idea of, of Toto and, and yeah, it went, it's, you know, it's gone really, really well. And so now I'm on my fifth book. So the idea is that she's just a regular cat um, and uh, Silver is kind of, is her brother and he's also kind of her, like her guide. And 
she is a fully trained ninja. Of course. And yeah, absolutely. And she is part of an ancient order of international ninja cats. Her boss being ten, uh, Larry, the 10 Downing Street cat. And the idea is that every, um, every world leader has one of these ninjas, be it a cat or a dog, any animal. And the international uh, ninja cat model uh, motto is, is purrs, paws and claws. So to make sure they don't do anything stupid, they use their purrs to calm them down. If that doesn't work, they use their paws to bat them. And if that doesn't work, worst comes to worst, they use their claws. So, um, so whilst there's, whilst humans think they're making all the decisions, actually animals are, are there uh, with their own schools, with their own transport system, with their own parliament, uh, having a, a merry old time as well. And Toto is, uh, is Larry's, so Larry, who's the, the head uh, ninja uh, in the UK, it's now Larry's head uh, deputy, as it were. So Larry's second in command. And did that did that all just come to you in sort of one go? This concept of this world with Larry the Ten Downing Street cat, of course, or was it a, a process of thinking, yeah, well, Toto is probably a ninja. That's, so that's a good we... question. The first the first book was very uh, it was called The Great Snake Escape, and and I, we were living near the zoo at the time, and I read a lot of this comes from like little bits and pieces you read. And uh, I read the story of these kind of quite harmless uh, to anyone but rats, snakes. Um, I think they, they, someone dumped them near the zoo or they escaped from the zoo and they were thriving in the canal. And I thought, hang on a second, this is a good idea. So I, I then researched what's the most venomous snake in London Zoo. And it was the king, at the time it was the king cobra. So that's where the first idea came from, um, uh, that a king cobra escaped from the zoo. And then Toto, even though she's only been here three weeks, with her best friends, uh, with her brother, Silver, and her best friend, this kind of quite mysterious, but incredibly charming uh, cat-rat type character called Catface, <clears throat> who um, there's a lot more to him than, than, than it seems. They end up sort of tracking this, this snake down. And once again, with the snake, the snake isn't really a baddie. He's just, he's just he's trying to get somewhere uh, to do a thing. And that's, that was the first book. <clears throat> but after that, I'd sort of created this world, um, not by accident, but every time I, I started writing, I was like, oh, wouldn't it be great if Catface was actually rat royalty? Okay, well, uh, so who are the royal rats? So I thought, well, maybe the five royal rat families in the whole of London. And he's, he's, um, he's essentially the rat, rat royalty. Of, so he's the heir to the throne of, of Ratborough, which is the, the rat capital of North London. And, um, and, uh, and with Toto, well, hang on, he's met, she's met Larry in the first book, but what if actually, she, she doesn't know this, but what if Larry you know, is actually going to be her boss. She's been through ninja training, but she's not part of any organization or anything like that. So wouldn't that be wonderful? So slowly, 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 these these kind of worlds that I'm writing about kind of get added on. And, and that's actually, it's, it's really interesting you picked up on that because that's, that actually is probably one of the most enjoyable bits of the, of the process is every book, you add another little bit of, so the animal tube, for example, I, I read that um, the tube was, was a lot of the tube was designed by a guy called I think his name was Leslie Green. So so I wrote in that Cornelius Green, his cat, while Leslie wasn't looking, kind of snuck in and altered the plans. So there was a whole animal tube. So the, you know the the Victorians ended up building the animal tube as well as the tube, um, completely unbeknownst to them. They, they yeah. just thought it was part of the original plans. So I like to sort of take bits of history and and, and weave yeah. them to the to the. I love that. Uh, this feels like a very natural time for you to please maybe you could just talk us through each book up to the point maybe you know don't give anything yeah, away sure. but just give it to, to where we are now and, and what's happening with Toto. So my first let me just see if I've got them because I've just moved house so I'm sort of in boxes but um I've got so that's first yeah I think I'm pretty much there so I haven't got the second but so the first was The Great Snake Escape where uh Brian the the, the, the most venomous cobra in, in London Zoo uh escapes and uh, Toto and her friends have to track him down. The second is her actual first mission when she realizes she's working for Larry. Um, and that's the incredible cheese heist, which is here, um, where every piece of cheese in the UK goes missing on the eve of a very important peace conference, both for humans and for animals. And Toto has to track it down because the if the cheese board isn't delivered, then chaos can ensue. And she meets her arch, her arch nemesis, Archduke Ferdinand, uh, who's an old ninja. In, uh, in that one. Um, then the third is they have a weekend off. It's called the Superstar Catastrophe. And they go to the, the Animal Festival of Catastrophe. But um, uh, there's kind of like, there's some, there's some evil machinations afoot down there, even though she's got the week off. The fourth is Toto the Ninja Cat and, uh, and, the, the, with the, and the Crown Jewels. So the idea there is that the, um, the Crown Jewels gets, the animal Crown Jewels get stolen. And, um, and, uh, from the Tower of London, 
and Larry gets framed for stealing them. So Toto has to find the crown jewels before um, a, a, a quite bad guy finds them and also uh, clear Larry's name in the process. And then the fifth, what we're up to now, is Toto and Ninja Cat and Legend of the Wildcat, where Toto and her friends travel to Scotland uh, to go to an animal behavioural camp. So her, her two brothers, by this time, off the back of the, the, uh, the, the great uh, 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 jewel robbery, um, because they're foiled that, they become honorary ninja deputies. And, um, and they go out celebrating, her two brothers in Catface. And they go to a bar called the, the Sour Saucer, which is a legendary animal bar that's been there since uh, the olden times in London, been there since the Victorian times in London when the big sail ships would stop there and to pick up their own cats and rats and so forth. Um, the, the cats and the, and, the, and the rats and dogs would have to drink a sour saucer of milk in the milk bar. It's called the Sour Saucer. And if they kept it down, it meant they, they, they could go to the new world. But if they didn't keep it down, they had to walk the plank. But the plank is still there. So they're still celebrating. And, um, and Catface uh, and her two brothers, largely Catface's decision, decide that if they could jump off the plank and land perfectly on this yacht down below, this animal's yacht. And uh, they do perfect somersaults, but they go straight through the yacht and sink it. And it turns out it's the yacht owned by Wigbert Fluffy Paws III, who's the cat home secretary, who hates the ninjas, hates the fact they have, uh, operate above the law. So he's livid. And uh, so he tells Larry that the, you know, he's going to have to come down hard with them. Larry sends all four of them to Glenview Behavioural Camp, which is this kind of animal um, uh, boot camp up in Scotland, which is based on a true story. My friend James is the dog called Dudley. Uh, it was very naughty. So he sent him to... Uh, Wales to, uh, to, to, to to go to this actual boot camp and um, and uh, and Dudley did really well up until the last pretty much up until the last day where he had to go through the chicken run so there's chickens on either side and there's like chicken wire I think you're halfway through and it just went crazy and tried to cast <laughs> so I thought it really tickled me when he was telling me about it so I thought it's a really fun idea and then the second part of the inspiration for this book because I wanted Toto to the Toto's obviously not been not doing anything wrong but she gets sent up there as well because Larry her boss has heard rumours of the legend of the wildcats the Scottish wildcats coming back and they have the, a rightful heir to the Scottish throne so Larry's kind of worried about them. they're not baddies, but Larry's kind of worried about them because he wants to know their motives. And even if, if you know, he doesn't think the legend's true, but if the legend is true, he just wants Toto to kind of flesh it out a little bit more. So Toto has to go undercover up to Scotland um, as a uh, as a budgie, as a as a budgie killer um, <laughs> who's serving time in the boot camp uh, to, uh, to to investigate what's going on. And that brings us up to speed. Perfect. Um, so uh, we obviously have a Q and A. Becky Cole, I think, is getting a real buzz of your passion for the books, and has got a great question. We'll ask that in the Q and A. If you have a question yourself, then put it in the Q and A, and we'll ask them at the end. Uh, Jake in the chat has said that he loves Toto the Ninja Cat and has all the books except the fifth one. So, Jake, you know what you've got to do next. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, to be fair to Jake, it's not out for I don't think for another book. Yeah. So, I mean, thank you, Jake. Yeah, I really appreciate. It. <laughs> yeah, it's doing everything you can. Uh, and Jake, if you've got a question for Dermot, get it in the Q&A section. Also, um, Jake, while we're here, because Jake is obviously a fan. Thank you, Jake. And I want to yeah. show you, because so, Nick East, my wonderful illustrator, who I think we're going to hear from later on, he does some, he does great illustrations. And so I got sent this through only a couple of weeks ago. Um, he sends me them on, on like PDF, so I can see them online. But until you have it in your hands, it's, it's a completely different thing. But he's done such a great job on the cover. Because the, yeah. the covers up to now have been quite dark in many ways, and he's so he's taken a, this and, and 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 what Nick does really well is he paints these pictures so well. So I'll sort of kind of obviously send him the text, and then sometimes I'll send him photographs and and um, and ideas. I'm a terrible uh, illustrator, terrible artist. So, but I have sort of I, I sort of tend to send, so for example with the sour saucer. I was walking along the south bank of the Thames, and I looked up, and the tide was out, and I just saw. I was next to Blackfriars Bridge and I saw underneath the Blackfriars and I thought that's exactly where I want to base about the animal milk bar. So that's where I took that, that shot for the sour saucer to, to be. So he, you know, he, he, we, we collaborate really well. He's such a great guy. Love that. Yeah, and as you said, we're going to hear uh, from Nick later and we're going to have a go at drawing Toto the Cat ourselves. Yeah. Um, did you always want to be an author? Is that something that 
from a very young age you were passionate about? Did you love books when you were little? Yeah, always, always loved books. I never thought I'd get, I, I always thought I had something uh, that I wanted to write. I wasn't entirely sure mm -hmm. what it was really until, and, until it kind of, until the accident of, of, of finding out about Toto really. I, I, had a, I had a couple of ideas and I've always got ideas sort of brewing around and I really like writing scripts and I really like writing dialogue. Um, so, you know, conversations and stuff um within scripts i think that's my probably my favorite thing is, is is actually writing you know the interactions between toto and the brothers and the baddies and whatnot um but i when i was when i was younger uh, my dad uh, so i'm a catholic so my dad took me to uh my my, my classes on saturdays when all my friends were playing football and rugby and stuff i had to go and get taught by nuns in the morning so i was ready for my first communion but but how he made this up for me because obviously I was thinking, well, hang on, I've been at school for five days a week and now I've got to go to a different school and get taught by nuns. So uh, I was kind of a bit put out when I was younger. But my dad would take me for breakfast afterwards um, in Colchester, where I grew up, uh, where my mum worked at British Home Stores, which had this amazing canteen. So I'd go and I was able to have whatever I wanted because of this. So I used to have like bacon and eggs and strawberry flan for breakfast. It was amazing. And on the way back home, we'd always go to the library. So we'd always, every week, I'd be able to get a new book and you know, read it within a week and then bring it back. And, and those were really, really special times to me. So I always had, always had a book on the go when I was a kid. And I always have one now. I mean, I, I don't, I can't, I, I, I don't think I've ever had not had, since I've been able to read, I don't think I've ever not had a book by my bedside. And I, um, I get as much out of it now as I did then. Do you currently, as, a, as an adult, do you read just one book from start to finish or do you read multiple books in the same way that people will watch different television programs on different evenings? Good question. So what I prefer to do is I'll read one book mm. that I'll either take with me if I'm traveling or at one time. And then whilst that's going on, I'll have one audio book, which is a big book, probably almost certainly not non like nonfiction like a historical yeah. book or something that I'll listen mm -hmm. to almost like you'd listen to a podcast, I suppose. Yeah. And just do it in sections. What about you? Uh, I go for one at a time because I find that I end up becoming, I, I get very obsessed over the books that I, I read to yeah. the point that I dream about them. And then when I finish them, uh, I've been told that oh, I'm wow. worn over books. So I always have to give myself a couple of weeks. Before Damn, you're, like a perfect, you're, book you're a perfect reader. You're, you're being, like the yeah i get really stuck in the story so that i can't then just go off and and take another book straight away so i have to give myself right. a couple of weeks before i can then crack on but i've always found it fascinating when people read multiple books at the same time no so my dad like, does I, I i can't do it i just i i, no. I, just, I think you're so engrossed in a book aren't you and the, and yeah. uh whereas you know you're watching five or six tv shows quite easily you yeah an hour here and yeah. an hour there and, yeah, yeah exactly um what were the books you loved when you were a child well like i said i had a great library experience so i could i could i mm -hmm. could always kind of dip in and out but i know it's going to sound like a cliche but those were old doll books when i was a kid because yeah amazing. because they were so different and and and, and the styles were different and no two book books were the same so you had that great way of like writing one minute you're reading George's Marvelous Medicine the next minute you're reading about the peach and the next you're reading about Fantastic Mr Fox and they're all they're all so different and they're, but at the same time they're also kind of the one thing I never liked when I was a kid was, was reading stuff that was kind of it was quite it would talk down to me a little bit and I, I, I yeah yeah I, I totally understand I think I was the same when I was um in, in my sort of tv watching as well I always loved stuff that was a bit naughty and a bit different that's why the simpsons is still my you know one of my favorite tv shows yeah, because it's amazing you get so much out of it and it's been like that way for 20 30 years and um yeah. uh and so that so and his books were like that you know his books were always kind of i always felt like i, I was in on the joke with him yeah i always like danny champion yeah well, that's that's underrated yeah definitely yeah. definitely yeah uh, is it right you used to make your own books yeah so my dad had well, my dad, my dad worked for British Telecom and uh, in the 80s, he, he was able to bring um, a computer home. And it wasn't like a, it was like a big old brick of a computer, but because he, was, he could bring it to work on. So because he, 
he could bring this computer over, it meant that I could play very, very rudimentary games. But I also meant that he had a printer and paper. Um, and so he had all this paper in the house. I'd never been around so much paper. So I was able to kind of sit and write, write these detective novels that I loved. And then, uh, and then, I mean, I was really young at the time. I was probably only six or something, five or six. And then I'd go around our estate and try and sell them to five. Five <laughs> and, um, and you know, poor neighbours would kind of just out of sympathy give me five p just to just to get me out. <laughs> yeah, but um, but I, yeah, I really, I yeah. So I've always loved it. Was been always been kind of passionate, I guess, about it. Um, and and there's something wonderful about writing a book. Like mm -hmm. it's not about it's lovely when 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 someone tells you they really enjoy it and I really appreciate that. There's something really lovely about the process of writing a book. I really enjoy it. Yeah. So obviously we should bring this back to Legend of the Wildcat more specifically. And you've told us about uh, some of your ideas and how you got them and like about Blackfriars Bridge and stuff. And obviously all that's uh, all set in London and it's a place obviously you spend a lot of time. This is in the Scottish Highlands. Did you go up there and do some research? Is it somewhere you go a lot? Is it in a very specific place? Because I think Scottish Highlands is probably yes, fairly definitely. broad. It was an amalgamation of places I've been because I couldn't go up and spend time where I wanted to spend time, which was, which was a bit further in the north, genuinely in the Highlands. And, um, and specifically where um, the wildcats have been kind of reintroduced. So, um, so part of this inspiration came from my uh, my my wife got me as my Christmas present last year <clears throat> a uh, an adoption pack for a Scottish wildcat called Finley. So the, the wildcats up there are <clears throat> obviously endangered, and you know for years I guess going back that's been to do with humans and poachers and you know all of that and 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 kind of almost seen as pests, but obviously now they're hugely protected. But um, more recently, it's been about wildcats mating with domestic cats. So it's only sort of, you know, means the bloodline's a bit less, less, less kind of pure. So um, they're reintroducing this, this cat called Finley into, into the Scottish Highlands. And so I'm, I'm one of its sponsors. So I kind of keep, keep track on him. And I thought that's a great idea about him being kind of a, like an aristocrat. Um, and we thought of like back in the old days of Rob Roy and Braveheart before him. So I thought that was a nice idea. And the, the, you know, the Scottish clans and so forth. But I went up to, one of my best friends lives in Glasgow. So I've been up a few times and we've been up to the sort of the glens and, and, and some of the locks. And that's beautiful. I really want to spend more time up there. Like I want to, you know, I've got a couple of mates that have climbed my rows and I really want to, uh, you know, I'd love to do a few of those. And it's such a nice, special part of the world. I spent some time in Sky, and I really love that. And camped on rum, and um, filmed up there a few times. And and also, I love the sleeper train. I um, mm -hmm. I used to get it all the time when I was doing X Factor, and I'd be working here. And then we we'd get the you know I'd have to be in Glasgow for the next day for working, or Edinburgh for the next day for working. So I so rather than get up early and get the flight, I'd sort of get myself packed and have my dinner here, and then and then get this great night's sleep going out of London Euston up to up to Glasgow and it's just it was just a really lovely um journey and uh, and you know one of those journeys are just pure full of pure excitement you know it's yeah. a it's a it's it, so it's a very special place I've got a lot of time for it it's like a very special place in my heart um but the sad thing was I wasn't able to get up because of lockdown yeah so all these inspirations come from either my trips before and I think one of the first shows I ever did was a show called SAS You Tough Enough. It's kind of a, a pre-runner to that SAS show now. That's wrong. Who Does Wins. And it's, um, we took regular members of the public and then we put them through this three-week condensed, I wouldn't call it an SAS course. It was an SAS kind of inspired and designed by the SAS. But just gave them a tiny taster as to what it would be like. And um, the first series we did in the middle, of, we were based in a, in a little village called, uh, town called Aberfoyle. But we did in the Kingdoms, and it was, that's where I fell in love with it. I think. Now, because you built this world that Toto lives in, in your head, and obviously within the books, does that make it easier to come up with new ideas, or is it difficult to think, "Oh, I'd like to write another book. What's going to happen this time?" God, that's a good question. I think 
I think the more you read, the more I read about history in particular, um, and and the more you listen to like those stories about my friends, um, about my friend's naughty dog, the more you can kind of go, hang on a minute, I could see that living in 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 the world of Toto. I think now I've got the world, it's easier to to add adventures into it, if that makes sense. You know, yes. now I know yeah. that Toto exists as it were five mm -hmm. months in now i know it's kind of where could she go next and I, I, i'm sort of i don't try and overthink that you know i've got a couple of ideas i've had that i've wanted to do for or probably a you know, couple of books worth now that i've just thought oh, i'd really like to do that and it just never got around to it so i've got you know there's a there's a there's a couple of ideas i know that um that that i the adventures i know that i think toto would really would be really good for toto yeah, so not a spoiler, but this definitely isn't the last one by the sound of things. I hope not. The next book I'm gonna read I'm gonna write isn't a Toto book, um, but it will involve animals. Um, I don't know if this is the audience for that, because in all the comments, everybody's saying that they love Toto. I, I, I definitely will write another Toto book, but I want to give something else a try. Um so yeah, it revolves animals and history. Mm -hmm. But uh, but this definitely isn't in for Toto. I, want to write, I certainly want to write some more adventures. Um, I'm going to make another quick reminder to all of you that are watching. because There's loads of people in the comments and they're telling, well, I can tell you what they're saying, if you like. Uh, so um, Ellie May is saying that she thinks Toto's brilliant. She's got all the books. Uh, Louise says, I just saw Misty Moon, my kitten. Um, uh, Becky Cole says, I love reading your books. Um, and we've got Dermot O'Leary is a great author. Not written by Dermot O'Leary. That's by Ellie May. Thank you, Ellie May. <laughs> Thank you. Everyone. Uh, if you have any questions, get them in the Q&A section. Uh, Dermot, could you do us all an enormous honour and maybe read us a little bit? Of course bit? I will, Sam. It'd be my honour to do that. That'd be ridiculous. So this is, so um, this is probably two, three, two chapters in, in the middle of the second chapter. And um, like I've set the scene, to, uh, Toto, Catface, Socks, Silver have a great night out to celebrate the guys being made ninja deputies, but it finishes with their cat face socks and silver jumping out of the saddle saucer, smashing this yacht in the Thames. The yacht sinks immediately. Woodbert Fluffy Paws the third turns up. He is, suffice to say, not happy <laughs> <laughs> about this happening. Uh, so he says to Larry, who says to the cats, I'm going to meet you at 10 Downing Street tomorrow, first thing in the morning, and then Larry's going to punish you. Larry, uh, Wigbo, you know, all the guys that have read this knows that, know that Wigbo, Fluffy Balls the Third, has it in for the ninjas. He hates the ninjas. He thinks they're above the, above the law. Um, and he's an old windbag. He doesn't, you know, doesn't, doesn't really like the ninjas at all. So they know they're in for punishment. So Larry has had to send them up to this correctional camp, Glenview Correctional Camp up in Scotland, where they, which is a, a correctional camp for like naughty animals. So whether it's a uh, sweary parrot or whether it's a scratchy cat or whether it's a wild animal that's been naughty, they all get sent up there and they have to stay up there for at least a week and pass a few tasks. And if they pass the task, they can go home. If not, then they have to carry on staying there. So. Uh, Catface thinks it's some kind of weird Swiss finishing school, so he's over the moon because he thinks it's going to be a doddle and like there's saunas and spas and things like that, as Catface always would. The Socks and Silver are a little bit more worried about it, but Toto has been told she has to go up there with them. Now, Toto is confused and a bit annoyed by this because she's thinking, well, hang on a second, this isn't my fault, uh, but she's more than willing to go up to keep an eye on them. But as, you, as I'm about to explain, uh, Larry has got an ulterior motive for her going up there. So he's just asked her to stay behind and just dismiss the other three. The little ninja's heart dropped. This was it. She was in for it now. She shut the door behind the others. Oh, boss, I'm so sorry. I should have done something, but everything happened so quickly before I knew it. They jumped out of the sour saucer, and to be fair, you should have seen the somersaults. They were really something else. She trailed off. Larry wasn't listening at all. More engrossed in the map of Scotland on his wall. Boss? What? Larry looks around, distracted. <clears throat> oh, don't worry about that. I don't blame you at all. And a week away from home comfort will do that lot, no harm whatsoever. I'm just sorry I have to ask you to go as well, but for an entirely different reason. Please sit down. 
He poured them both a glass of creamy milk before continuing. Toto, what do you know about the legend of Felis of Grampia and the wild cats of Scotland? <clears throat> Absolutely nothing, answered the little ninja. Should I? No, I'm not surprised. Not many animals outside Scotland do. But there was a time when the wildcat clans ruled all of Scotland, inspiring loyalty and fear in equal measure. They were the mightiest warriors in the world, just as exalted as us ninjas. They were seen as fair and just to most animals. They were good rulers, and they were legendary fighters. No army could beat them. Toto was fascinated. They seemed like her kind of cats. What happened to them? She asked. Well, sadly, mankind did, Larry sighed. They were hunted, seen as pests, danger to livestock. The last few were thought to have disappeared a couple of hundred years ago. Sorry, I don't quite follow, she said. What has this got to do with me going to Scotland? Larry refilled Toto's glass and sat at the table opposite her. Well, local legend has it that a few of these wildcats still remain, the descendants of the great clan chiefs, living nomadic lives, wandering the highlands, and that one day they will rise up, march on Edinburgh, and claim their rightful place as the last cat, cat kings of Scotland. Well, if it's just a legend, what's the problem? Well, up until last week, it was as far-fetched as Nessie, he said. Excuse me? Really? You don't know about the Loch Ness Monster? They taught you nothing in that Italian ninja school. Well, never mind. Last week, my contact up here thinks you may have spotted Phoenix. Thinks, she said. Well, it's a stupid, superstitious old so-and-so. He probably just saw a large domestic cat. Loads of sightings every year come to nothing. Mostly domestic cats on their holidays. Love the legend. And into the whole wildcat reenactment scene. Quite odd if you ask me. But I feel duty-bound to investigate. So when your brother sank Fluffy Paws Yacht, give me the perfect opportunity to send you up there to find out more. So on to travel up with the boys tomorrow. Tickets and papers right here, said Larry, opening his drawer. There are... A Couple of things I need you to know. One, you're undercover. The last thing we need is the animal press getting hold of this and causing a panic. Which brings me to my next point. No ninja moves, guess Toto with a sigh. No ninja moves, confirmed Larry. Sorry, Toto, but if anyone at the camp guesses who you are, we'll be rumbled. So I've decided you're going to use a secret identity for the week. I passed over the tickets and a Braille ID card because Toto's blind, she has to read through Braille. Toto moved her paws over the braille. Tiddles Braithwaite? Hardly sounds like the name of a naughty cat. Oh, you'd be surprised, Larry Grin. Read on. One female owner, Gladys Braithwaite, aged 82, of 14 Winterbottom, Winterbottom Avenue, Croydon, sentenced to a week at Glenview Correctional Camp for, Toto looked up at Larry, attempting to eat the pet budgie Petulia. Larry? Everyone hates budgie killers. They're the lowest of the low. That's right. And everyone is scared of them too. So no one will mess with you. It's the perfect cover. Oh, I forgot you'll be needing this. He threw a yellow wool coat, a hat, and a pair of sunglasses at Toto. Lovely. No one will recognize you. It makes me look like an old lady. Exactly, he exclaimed. Now, get in character. Keep an eye on those troublemaking boys and report back to me if you find anything, which I'm sure you won't. Toto left, feeling pretty relaxed about the week ahead, even with a silly outfit to wear. Since the chances of the legend being real were pretty much non-existent, all she had to do was observe and try and keep her brothers and cat face out of trouble. If only it was going to be that easy. <laughs> what a teasing place to leave it. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. So now they travel up to Scotland and then we'll see yeah. what happens. Well, I think that's something where everybody, that's what everybody wants to know. Everybody wants to know what happens. Um, uh, Becky Cole has just commented awesome. She loved it. Thanks, Becky Cole. Now, thank you so much for that. We're going to have another really cool thing now for everybody watching. Uh, we're going to learn how to draw Toto. But before we do that, how did Nick get involved in the first place for you? And obviously, because Toto exists, did you have a very clear idea about how she would look in illustration yeah sam that's, that's a great question because I, I i i'm terrible illustrator so i have no i i'm if you ask me to draw something now i draw it exactly the same way as i drew when i was three years old so i i just the part of that that part of my brain just never developed um, <laughs> so i needed a good illustrator and uh my publishers um Hachette, they hooked me up with they said that there's a couple of people that wanted me to meet and then before i could meet the other person they uh took a different job i think which meant that the only person I was going to meet to start with was Nick. 
So Nick came down from York, he lives in York, which is where, where my sister lives. And he came down, he met the cats and we had some lunch together and then he sketched the cats and then he went back and I, I looked out the window, I saw him sketching our street. And I thought, God, this, why, this is such an interesting guy. And then he sent back what he'd sketched and, I, and, and he's done such a great job of capturing um, of Toto and, and Silver and, um, and such a great job of actually creating Catface and, uh, and an Archduke Ferdy Cat, Toto's kind of nemesis. But you know, I, feel, pardon me, I feel very much like he's, he's, you know, he's really probably part of the, of the creative process of Toto now. I don't think, you know, I wouldn't want to, I couldn't do it that, Nick. I wouldn't want to do it that, Nick. I love him. So the way it works is normally I send him the, I, I send him the, the, the text after I finish writing it and, and editing it. So you, you sort of go through three processes. So I write the book, I send it to my publisher, then they come back with um, changes or, or suggestions rather and, and, and edit. And then I sort of take some of those and I go back and say, oh, I don't agree with this. Or yeah, you made a good point here. I'll, I'll rewrite that bit. And then we do that two or three times. And then while this is all happening, I'll be sending stuff to Nick. And then Nick gets a, a, a kind of you know, a final uh, uh, draft, I suppose. And then he starts putting in, and then I send him where I think the illustration should be, uh, which I don't know if he appreciates or not. But I mean, so, and then, um, and then, then he sends me back. He's, he's kind of working in about three or four chunks, and he's he's brilliant. But I, it, it sort of surprised me because he was telling me that quite a lot of authors never meet the illustrators, and that that would be so that would be so weird and and um, uh, and counterintuitive for me. I love the fact that we've got that, that close working relationship. It's really important, really special. And also, this is really personal for you because Toto is a cat. Yeah, exactly. And actually, you, but you also you feel. Kind of ownership over the characters that don't exist. We can ownership over <laughs> yeah, Cat and Archie yeah. Fairly Cat and all those guys. You know? So yeah. um, you want to make sure that they're kind of captured correctly. Mm -hmm. And Nick does is, and he's the nicest guy too. Awesome. Uh, well, now Nick is going to give us. He, he's not actually here as much as he would love to be, but he has recorded a special video teaching us all how we can draw Toto. So if everybody has a pen, I'll give you a quick ten seconds. Get yourself a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper. Find that, and we are now all going to learn how to draw. Are we ready? I'll yeah, let's do it. Okay. Okay, so we're going to have a go at drawing Toto the Ninja Cat. I'm going to start somewhere near the top of this piece of paper with a curved line, just a slightly curved line like that. And then either end of that curved line, I'm going to do a tall triangle. One there, on there, what do you think they are? Hmm. Their ears, of course. Now, to get the shape of Toto's head, we need to continue those lines down a little bit further, trying to get them the same length if you can. And Toto has these really big oval eyes, one at that side angling down a bit and you can go around a few times just to get the shape and Toto's nose is a really simple little upside down triangle so I'd like you to draw a line straight down and she's going to be in this kind of uh, ninja pose like a leap off the ground so I want a suitably ninja -y sort of mouth I'm going to do a little angled line like this and then just another line just down. Does that look kind of ninja-y? Yeah, I think it does. And I'm going to do my eyebrows angling down like so and you can go over them a few times to make them a bit thicker. Now, if to bring this face to life, what we need to do is put in some pupils, I think, in the eyes. So I'm going to have mine looking off to the side and I'm going to colour those eyes in just to make them stand out. Right now we're going to put in Toto's body. And I'm going to start with the big furry ruff that's around her neck. 
and I'm going to draw it really simply. I'm not going to bother putting all little individual bits of hair in. I'm going to draw a line, slightly curved line, all the way to the middle. And it comes to a point and just the same thing at the other side. So we're going to go all the way around like that and then a little point. Same thing this side. Trying to get it symmetrical if we can, which can be a bit tricky. So just go all the way around like that, all the way up. There, so that's Toto's body. We're going to put in her legs, and because she's doing this leap in the air, she's going to have her legs in sort of odd positions. But I'm going to draw them as simply as I can. We're going to have one sticking out at the side here, so yeah. I'm going to use this sort of another U shape really. And then the other leg is going to be sticking out straight down. Draw a line out there like that. And then another one next to it, just narrowing in a little bit. Do you see what I mean there? And on the end of that leg, we're going to put a paw. And the paws are really easy to draw. Just a line up there like that. And then three little bumps on the end. One, two, three for the toes. I'm going to draw the same two lines, narrowing in. And then a paw on the end of that. But this paw is going to be pointing downwards. So something like that with three bumps on the end. Put one there. And then if we go across it, it's going to be at a slight angle. Put the other one in there. Go around again to get the shape right. We need to do the same thing again. We're going to put in... This is going to be exactly the same as this one. Line in there, and then another line in there, narrowing in, and on the end, another paw with the three little bumps. And the same thing at this side, just flipped around the opposite way. Maybe do that a fraction any longer. And then a little paw on the end of that one, sticking up. Okay, there we are, starting to look like a ninja cat now. Hmm. And there we are. That is how to draw Toto the Ninja Cat. How did everybody do? That was those little fast forward bits, if I'm honest, didn't help me at all. No! There was there was like fast forward, oh, loads of detail all of a sudden. That's so okay. cute. What, did you, what have you got? Let's see it. Wow. This is the reason why I have an illustrator. But... Yeah. Oh, I think that looks pretty good. That looks, I mean, that looks bang on. I, I dread to do it without following Nick's instructions. Let's yes, see your yeah, time. Uh, where's the... Where's hey, the that's fantastic. What's not helpful is that there's, there's writing on the other side of the piece of paper. <laughs> so, there you are. It's not too <laughs> helpful, is it? Very um, good. For all of you that had a go at home, if you can get an adult to help you and if you put it on Instagram or if you put it on Twitter and you tag Dermot and you tag Nick, they would love to see it. Uh, and that will be the best way that they can see it. And now uh, we're at the very exciting part uh, where we now get to the Q&A. Great. Dermot, are you ready? Because they have been sending some questions and no one is holding any punches. Oh, okay. Yes, I am. These are the serious ones. Oh, no. Question one. Will Catface ever be adopted by a human family? <laughs> well no i don't think so because he's like the idea of, you can't keep cat face in a in one home cat face is a, a as i'm sure you uh whoever asked this question who is do you know, do you know it says anonymous i'm afraid oh, yeah um cat face is, is such a the great thing about the character cat face is that he's done everything he's done a little bit of, of everything so uh he's almost a lawyer he uh he but he, then he left before he graduated um because he wanted to travel the world so he ended up on a corned beef ship to brazil 
um, he is a jazz singer. He there's something there's something brilliant about about him where he's kind of he, he's experienced everything. Uh, so I think I think in a lot in in this yeah in this book we discover that he was part of the Rat rowing team in the Rat Olympics. Um, so he's there's every there's something great about him. So um, I don't think he'd want to be a doctor. I think he's very happy to to be you know um, uh, a very much a kind of a free spirit. Nice. I like that. But he's uh, always Becky, welcome at Toto's hats. I mean, he's yeah. there half the time. <laughs> uh, half the time. Becky Cole would like to know, which is your favourite Toto book? Tough question, Becky Cole. Um, hard, because the first one's obviously really special, because you get the first one published. So, but I'm going to say number two, only because I really like... I really like the river and it's all based around the river. It's all based around um, uh, the, the cheese getting smuggled out of, of the UK. So it's kind of based around the docks down in, um, down in East London. Uh, so and a lot, I really enjoyed writing about that. And also, I guess after you've written the first one, had the idea, and then they, they, you know, they said, great, we'll, we'll take two. And I remember leaving the office going, well, I think I want one idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, um, and it took me a while and then suddenly I something clicked and I started writing all these ideas. And I, so I really, really enjoyed that part of it. Uh, is Socks a real cat? Socks is 100% a real cat. Socks is, I've only seen him once today, he just disappeared. Um, Socks is a, Battersea um, is, is adopted for Battersea and he is um, a lovely cat. He's quite bitey but he's a lot less bitey now than he used to be so when so when we first adopted socks he um is hey we only first saw him when he was eight weeks old so um we we fell in love with him immediately but he was this tiny kitten in in battersea cat times all these big cats on either side of him and uh, and he was just in his little cubicle with his paws tucked in like that and it was kind of it's kind of sad because obviously he was up for an adopt up for adoption before he um before he was even out of kittenhood really so we don't know if he was abandoned or we don't know whether he um someone tried to take him on and, and they, they adopted him too early because he should have really been with his mum up to mm -hmm. about 12 weeks so we got him so we got him very early so it's taken him a while to kind of calm down um and learn how to be a cat really so now he's kind of now he's four and he's just starting to um relax a little bit and him and toto get on pretty well and yeah but so he's definitely a real cat he's a great cat it was like great fun um juno and casper are big fans they've got all four books and they would like to know if the real toto and silver's favorite food is actually mac and cheese uh toto's favorite food is probably either chicken or white fish. So if we ever cook anything that's kind of, if we ever get fish and chips, then we have to like take the batter off and just give Toto a little bit of the white fish. She loves it. Uh, Soxy's favorite food is definitely anything dairy. And uh, um, he absolutely loves it. And then Silver was the same. Silver loves um, yogurt. And, uh, and and then I tell you what they love is those little thrive treats. You can get those treats, and they love because because they're sort of dried bits of fish or chicken, and you can throw them, and then they just chase after them. So they love sort of part of the 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 the, the, the game of kind of chasing after those. Yeah. Uh, Jake says, "Will Toto and Silver ever go to space?" Ooh, Jake, that's amazing. Um, I don't have any plans up until you just said that, Jake, and now I might nick your idea. No, <laughs> I don't think so. But if I do, ever send them to space, I'll credit you, definitely. But they might go on a plane quite soon. Oh, hello, now we're talking. Uh, this is a great question. This is my favourite one so far. Do, do you ever read Toto, the book featuring Toto? To Toto? Yeah. I sort of... I, I never really read it to her. I sometimes, like, when we get a new one, I'll definitely show her it, and I'll, uh, yeah. I'll sort of put it next to her and try and take a picture. I try and get, um, I try and get a shot of her with a picture of her. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, she's blind, so she's kind of non-plugged by that. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I might start reading it to her. 
Yeah. Think about cats, they don't need a bedtime story because they're in bed all the mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Um, Jake, by the way, has responded to your answer. He said, thank you. And then a dragon emoji. Oh, God. Which, if I'm honest, I don't entirely understand the dragon emoji. No, he's a, a dragon emoji guy. I don't know if that's a threat to, like, if you steal his idea. <laughs> yeah, then you'll get this dragon. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's a dragon it. coming. Um, another great question here. Becky said, could they travel back in time? Oh, I'd love that. I really yeah. would. In fact, um, but while you're here, Becky, my next book that I'm going to write is is based in a historical context. So I'm going to start doing that in about a month or two. Um, and But it won't be a Toto and Silver book. Uh, but that's not a bad idea. Maybe a prequel. All right. Uh, would you like to do some quick fire questions? Yes. Okay. Okay. Cats or dogs? Oh, hard, because I do love dogs. I'm not an anti-dog person at all. Sure. Um, and I would like a dog, but it's got to be cats. It's okay. Everybody has a preference. Domestic cats or wild cats? Domestic cats. I love wild in- cats. But, but... It- England or Scotland? Ooh. Scotland. Not technically here, but what if I then added Scotland or Ireland? Ireland. Yeah, I thought that's what I would get. Uh, towns or countryside? Oh. I, I mean, it's hard, man, because I love people. Yeah. With lockdown, countryside's been really important. Yeah. Uh, well, if we had the seaside? Seaside, 100%. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Um, mountains or valleys? Mountains. Good choice. Uh, chocolate or cheese? Chocolate. Milk or water? Milk. Or just like a glass of milk? I love a glass of milk. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, handwriting or typing on a computer? I wish I could say handwriting, mm-hmm. but my handwriting's awful. It's the type of computer. Nice. Uh, TV or radio? Ooh. To watch or do? Either or. Or oh, 50, 50. I can't. I can, literally can't choose between the two. Okay. Presenter or author? These are really hard. Stop mm. it. Yeah, but I'm not going to mess around. This is serious. I can't choose. You got, you, I mean, that's what we're here for. You know, we're not here for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, goodies or baddies? Uh, all baddies. Okay. English or maths? Say again. English or maths? English. Yeah. Maths is, uh, maths is you know, helpful, sure. But... I mean, you know, smart kids know maths. Yeah. Um, uh, other questions, ju- I think people are just sort of interested at... Uh, but Toto's not about, right? Because people want to see her, but obviously she's not. She's not about. I, know she is. I tried to find her upstairs where I thought she'd been for 12 hours. <laughs> uh, and then she's disappeared on me. So I don't know where she yeah. is. I'd love to. I just opened the door and see. The door's open, so she might. Yep. If, she, if she wants company, she'll come in. But also, it adds quite a nice sort of through the keyhole element to this. <laughs> but it would literally moved in two weeks ago. So don't yeah. get this is, this um, is not how it's supposed to look. Now, we only have a few minutes left. So I think people would probably appreciate if you could answer this question. What advice would you give to any budding young writers? The most important thing. The most important thing. It's going to sound really stupid and a cliche is put pen to paper now because Simon Mayo, who's who's a, like a legendary broadcaster in this country, who uh, started at Radio 1 when I was listening and then was at Radio 2. So with this, when I was listening, when I was a kid, was, I think the Radio 1 breakfast show, so he'd be like doing Greg James's job now. And, uh, and then was at Radio 2 for a very long time. And Simon's a brilliant author. He's written loads of different books. And uh, I think he started with young adult fiction. And Simon, and so I was asking him when I first came up with Toto, the idea. And he said, there's just, there's, there's, there's nothing, there's no substitute for just putting pen to paper. So just write your ideas down. Don't worry about how silly they might seem to you. Write dialogue, write uh, stories, write scenes. Um, because you can always 
stop them and start again. And 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 he, he was so right. I sort of went home and I just started to write. And then the ideas come to you. And I know that sounds so silly and basic, um, but it's really, really important. There's a great ice hockey player. The, I'm sure you know, Sam, uh, Wayne Gretzky. Or mm -hmm. He's like one of the greatest ice hockey players of all time. And he has a motto. He had a motto when he was playing, which is like, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So you've got to go for it. And you've just got to see where it takes you. And you know what? I've got ideas that I that are in my drawers that are from three, four, five years ago that I know I'll, I will write eventually, but um, but I'm not writing them now, and that's okay. And and maybe nothing will come of them, but I'm, I'm I'll definitely I will definitely go back and I'll flesh them out and and see what happens. But just put pen to paper. It's the most important thing. Just put it down on record so you've got it in your head, and then have an idea where you want to take it. I mean, there's some great writers out there, adult writers out there, like the great Lee Child. He never planned anything. And he wrote those Jack Reacher books, like 20, 30 of Jack, these Jack Reacher books, however many, like tens of these books. And he just sat down and, and just literally just thought, well, where's this going to take me? And he wrote these books, the most successful, some of the most successful books in the world. So, you know, there isn't one rule for you, but I really, really enjoy um, putting pen to paper and just seeing. And even now when I write Toto, I've got an idea what I'm going to do. I've sort of got a, a little arc. And sometimes I put it on a whiteboard and sometimes I won't need to. Sometimes I'll just write it write my sort of my chapter plan in my head or on my notepad um and some days i'll just go down what i call a rabbit hole and go oh, what's down there let's have a little look let's just I'll, I'll end up writing about something that you know i don't even wasn't the i didn't start the day wanting to write about and that's 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 kind of that's what i think that's what i really enjoy most about it awesome well damn it i'm afraid that is all of our time Oh, thank you thanks. so much for answering all the questions. Thank you for answering everybody's questions that they've been sending in. Uh, and I mean, thank you for answering the quick fire questions too. Very difficult sometimes. Yes, definitely. Oh, yeah. um, and yeah. thank you everyone for joining. I really appreciate it. It's been, it's been nice talking. And that's it. So thank you all for watching. Uh, hopefully you will love the book when it comes out. It's in a week, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next Thursday, I think. 16th, is it? Is it? Is it? <laughs> yeah next thursday you can get it then uh toto yeah, the ninja cat and the legend of the wild cat you'll love it brilliant thanks so much sam well, everyone thanks, thanks, have a good night